All right, another story for you. Celebrities seem to love Twitter because they can connect directly with their fans. But sometimes those messages turn ugly, and that is exactly what happened to Sherry Shepard. We want to tell you about that. Yeah, The View host was already getting some nasty tweets from people who were upset about a picture that she posted of Lil' Kim. Now, she didn't pay much attention to them until one violent tweet crossed the line. Now, it's coming around dinner time, and we want to show you this tweet because it's what's in the news, but because you may be at home with the kids, we've left out the most offensive word in this tweet. Someone using the name the clone killer posted, somebody should drag you in a back alley and blank you. Yeah, ugly stuff. Sherry is fighting back, demanding that Twitter do something about anonymous online bullies. Uh, let's talk to a very good friend of Sherry's, entertainment journalist, uh, John Murray. John, great to have you with us. Uh, I know you're, as we said, you're really good friends with Sherry. You actually spoke to her after she got that, that really ugly tweet. Uh, how's she doing? She's doing good, and she's not solely relying on Twitter to handle the matter. Uh, Sherry and I spoke after she went to the police department last night. Uh, she turned over all the information, provided them with the inflammatory tweets, uh, and so they are now going to subpoena Twitter, get the IP, which is the detailed computer information, of all the offenders, uh, and they're going to go ahead and proceed on with charges. Now, I've also found out, just before I got on air today, uh, ABC Legal sent me a note saying that they have also... Uh, notified law enforcement officials, ABC Legal and ABC Security are all involved. They're taking this matter seriously, and now the FBI might be getting involved as well. Okay. Yeah, indeed. Uh, HLN just got that, that statement also uh, that local law enforcement is involved as well as corporate legal and security departments and that this matter is being taken very seriously. But you know the thing, Ryan, yeah. we were talking about that really caught our attention. This individual using this Twitter handle is still posting nasty tweets about Sherry. Up until minutes ago, I mean, hey, John, I want to ask you about this. She, she, Sherry was responding on Twitter, and let's show you some of those. She said, I retweet the tweets and threats to bring attention to the seriousness of cyber bullies. There should be laws that demand consequences. What I thought was so interesting about her message in all this is that she is not only fighting for herself, she saw this happening, and she felt like, well, you know, I understand now what happens to kids that get bullied on Twitter and what happens to kids that get bullied on Facebook and how they feel. Ryan, what, what, what most people don't know is that this has been going on over the course of a month. It was a month ago when Sherry originally posted the Little Kim photo. And so for a month, she ignored a lot of the people. Uh, you know, block is everybody's favorite button on Twitter because when a wackadoo shows up and says something crazy, that's how you can permanently get rid of them. But this particular guy struck a chord with Sherry because she had just heard about the story of the 12-year-old in Harlem who committed suicide because of bullying. Mm. And she's like, I'm a woman of a certain age. I have a certain mature level. A, a teenager, someone underage, they don't have the mental capacity to face something like this. And so that's why teenagers and young people are killing themselves because of bullying. And so if me taking a stand with a couple of the thumb thugs on Twitter uh, will help these young people overcome this bullying epidemic, then I'm going to get involved and I'm going to throw my name out on the front lines and I'm going to make a change. All right, John, I'll tell you one thing. From a legal perspective, if she does get that subpoena fulfilled and she does get that address information, you know what you do? Don't post that. We've seen that happen so yeah, many times. People fighting back on Twitter. It is not a good idea. Let the legal process run its course. Um, but this is just despicable. Yeah. I don't know. You know, people hide behind Twitter. And that's the thing, you know? John. I wanted to get your, your quick thought on that. The fact that we are in this world now where people feel like they can shoot their mouths off on Twitter because they can hide behind these, these fake Twitter handles. I, I wonder what you make of all of that. You know, I think it's time for some of the social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, and the other ones, to invest money in security. They need an infrastructure in place that there's certain target words that when they're uh, posted, when people say them, that the security people listen and pay attention to what the conversation is. If I was on the phone with either one of you all, you know, there's certain words that if I say to you, the government is going to listen to our phone. Well, that has to happen in social media. There's certain things that when people say it, the social media platforms pay attention and they get involved and they permanently make these people go away. Yeah. yeah. Well, Couldn't agree more. I've yeah. had to block people on Twitter, too. Couldn't yeah, agree more, John. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, everyone, as I say, everyone feels like a, a big person on Twitter because they can hide or in the world of social media. John Murray, really appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much. Anytime.